this is a disclaimer. We are working on carburation right now. Carburetors are the source of fuel in your engine. Be very aware of that. And the excessive amount of fuel could potentially start a fire. So be very careful when you're working around your engine. What's up everybody, it's George T from The Wagon. This week, we're gonna be doing something I've been meaning to do for quite some time. And that's gonna be teaching you guys how to sync dual carburetors. If you've got a timing light, especially one like this that has a tack on it, this is definitely gonna be the way to go. If your ear's not trained to it, you're gonna be able to see numbers here to know whether it's helping or hurting as you're making the air fuel mixture adjustments. This is gonna be for doing our air fuel adjustments. This one's gonna be for our idle speed. On this application, we got four millimeter hardware there. We got two sinks to choose from. Unfortunately, we can only use the unisync on this one because of clearance issues. Make sure you got some options like that if you're doing multiple cars. For our Jeanberg linkage, we got a 3 8 box end and a 7 16 box end. We're also got a 10 millimeter to check the sides of our fan trod, make sure they're good and tight, along with the strap, which is a 10 millimeter as well. This has a T-clamp on it. We have an eight millimeter for removing our barrel nut on the throttle. Five sixteenths and the eight millimeter just in case we need to adjust our throttle stops on the linkage. Do yourself a favor, if you got some carb cleaner, before you even start the synchronization of your carbs, you should at this point have pulled and cleaned your jets already. You should have a base tune done in the vehicle. On this particular application, I've already replaced my base intake gaskets, so we know that we're good to go. We're gonna be a runner. We don't have any pre-existing conditions to worry about. We're not going into a tune on this. This is just the synchronization. There are fundamentals of a carburetor that you should know before you get into the actual art of synchronizing carburetors. And you're gonna find all the information you need to know in these crazy things called books. Oh, George, I got Dells, I don't got Weber's. Guess what? There's a book on Delorto's as well. We're working on a Weber setup here. So we refer to this for any questions that we have. Inside here, you'll find the basics of jetting formulas. I'm gonna give those to you right now so you can verify that your jet stack is correct. Your idle jet should be your vent size. The vent is the, the bump out, the choke you're gonna see down the throat of your carburetor. It will be vent size times 1.4. That's gonna give you your idle jet, get you in the neighborhood of it, really close. Rarely do I ever have to adjust after I've done this formula. Vent size, times 4.1 or 4.3, depending on if you want to favor to the rich side of it, that's going to get you your main jet. On Weber's, usually a 200 error is across the board. On Delorto's, they're asking for a 180 error on theirs. On a 48 IDA Weber, this is your idle speed screw. Turn it in to increase and out to decrease. So that would be right to increase, left to decrease idle speed. The next one we're gonna worry about is the air mixture screw here. It's in, the, it's in the same location on most carburetors. The IDA happens to face upward. If you're working with IDF carburetors, they face straight out, or DRLA Delorto's face straight out. Those are our three most common carburetors we have on VWs besides stock. On most of those applications, this is like a needle that goes into an orifice. So as you tighten it in, it's closing that orifice and it's not allowing air and fuel to get into the mixture in here. So you turn it in and you're taking fuel away. You turn it out, you're adding fuel to the mix. Most of the time, a flathead screwdriver is what fits this application here. Usually, this would be a flathead. In this particular application, they have it as a four millimeter Allen. For the Gene Berg linkage, you're gonna need a 7 16 box end wrench and a 3 8 box end wrench. That'll handle any of these connection points along here. When we synchronize the carbs for the first time, we disconnected the linkage up here. So we have all our tools ready. Our first step is going to be to fire this motor up and get up to operating temperature. You never wanna adjust your carbs when they're cold. If they do, you're gonna get a false reading on those air mixture screws. So definitely get up to operating temperature before we start messing with anything. I recently installed this Jeanberg linkage and I have it set up to where it will run even without being synchronized. Get yourself your timing light that has your tachometer on it and set that up. So as you're adjusting those air mixture screws, if you don't hear it, you'll see it in the numbers. We're gonna go through a little checklist before we even fire the engine up. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check for leaks. I'm gonna have Ocean go up front, fire up the fuel pump. We're gonna just check our fittings, make sure we're good. Our next step, 
is going to be looking down the throats of the carburetor. Make sure we're not overflowing our float bowls. Once you've verified you have none of these issues, then we'll move forward with actually trying to fire her up. All right, Ocean, turn the key on. My fitting on the right side is a little wet, so I'm gonna check and make sure that it's tight, and then we'll proceed with the float check. Well, that sucked. This was leaking. So I had to take that car back off and fix a few lines in the back there, replace it with a push lock one. I've had it. just bad luck with these. Once they lose their seal, you have to remake an entire setup for it. So we changed it with a push lock hose. Now I've verified I don't have leaks. Now we're gonna look into the throats of the carburetors with a key on and see if our float bowls are overflowing. Key power on. So now we got the pump running and I'm just looking down the throats of each carb. Verifying our needle seat is stopping the flow of fuel. At this point, this motor's been running for a bit. It's got it's at operating temperature for sure, and I've got one linkage arm completely disconnected and this linkage arm on. I'm using the unisync. It's a little more difficult to, to use, but you basically put it on top of the velocity stack. You tighten that down so you get the ball to float to a certain line that you want. And then you're gonna take it from side to side to balance them out to each other. So I'm starting on this because it's, it's already connected. This is my, what I'm gonna call my lead carburetor. When I put this on there, I'm then going to try and match that carburetor to the same to the same float level in the unisync. quarter turn watch it react to make sure I'm on the right track 
AZ. You see it starting to stumble? So I pull it out that quarter. And I take it out one more quarter because that's the highest idle I, like, I had achieved on that cylinder. Right there. We're up to 11.30. Most likely going to climb higher than that. Let's go to a spend buying him. All that it went up because I took fuel away from that one as well. Starts to go down. Take it out to where I had the highest idle on that side. We do the same thing on this side.
United States leading is hitting fur. Snug everything up. specific fix I'm going to do here, okay? Because you can only turn one arm at a time, you can't make it bigger in these tiny increments. It's always got to be one revolution. So what Bert tells you in the instructions is, if you got one that's leading, come over to this side. Well, if it's leading here, I can change my center point by coming inward. Just a touch. We're not getting crazy with it. You're putting a slight bend inward, you're changing the center of it. Much better. This one is still slagging a little bit behind. So now I'm gonna go on that arm and bend it in this way to have it catch up. And these are extremely slight bends, like that doesn't look bent now, correct? So slight, slight bend. Ever so slight on those bends. quite a bit of stuff going on there and I knew it was gonna be hard to narrow it with that motor running timing light is crucial it's gonna help out so much if your ears not trained to this to show the very slight differences as you're adjusting those air mixture screws first thing we do is we have linkage disconnected and we set our base idle it may be a little high for the time being we can always go back and correct that just as long as the motor is idling and when you go from left to right with the synchronizer the unisync or the snail whichever one you're choosing that they match each other at that point you can check carbs front to back as well they should match meaning if i did a, if i'm at a certain level here on the front here on number four cylinder when i move it back to three cylinder they should be the same that means your throttle plates are in the right spot so we have achieved that so once we actually have the base idle set with one linkage still disconnected then we go into our mixture screws i always start by taking away I take away and I go quarter turn at a time and you're waiting about four to five seconds per turn for a reaction from the motor. If you just sit there and turn them willy nilly, when are you gonna know you got it right? When I say a quarter turn, if the, if the flathead's facing this way, boom, I turn a quarter turn in that way, taking fuel away. How is the motor reacting? As you saw when we started this, it actually started going up right away as opposed to what most people think is down. It means they were probably set a touch on the rich side to begin with. Once we have our mixture screw to where it goes to what we call a stumble, you bring it in and it really like, bup, bup, like it's, it, you're losing that cylinder, you bring it back out until you get back to your highest peak idle you achieved on that one cylinder. Move on to the next one until you got all four of them done in that same manner. Then you come back 
and you check your, your idle speed screws. On this particular application, there was a four millimeter Allen T I was using. So we may need to bring it down because now that we got them all at their peak, we're doing 1200. Bring them back down. You go to left or right, bring it back to where we're hopefully in the area of about a thousand RPM is what we always shoot for. Once you got about a thousand, you have to go revisit your mixture screws, each one individually. You may even end up with the same exact space on it. You may be an eighth of a turn in instead of a quarter. So just turn it until you reach your peak idle and it maintains it for four to six seconds and you're good. When you get the mixture screw set up again and you're gonna come back in to reconnect your linkage to it now. Now you want both of them on there and it shouldn't be affecting your idle. If it's affecting your idle, you got the one arm too short or too long. So once you get your secondary linkage arm on and there is no difference in idle, connect it, double check with the sink again. Once you think you have them correct on the sink and they're hitting, what I'm saying hit, I mean I'm barely touching this and you can see that they hit at the same time. When you got them hitting at the same time, you're pretty much done at that point. You go back and you put the sink back on and you make sure that they're still synchronized to each other. You should be finished with this application. Now this entire time we've been doing this, this throttle cable's been disconnected. Now we can actually go in and connect that throttle cable. Don't put too much tension on it. When you're putting it on, it should almost be slack in the back. All right, so I'm grabbing my Nipex and I'm making sure that I'm pulling in on this one here, not crazy tight. Just pulling in to know the pedal up front is in the upright position. Now once I get that connected, I'm gonna come on this side of it because that's the way it's gonna wanna lift. And I make sure that it's not lifting. My thumb is on, my thumb is putting pressure on the accelerator cable on this side, okay? Because we don't want to add a bunch of tension. So I got a finger on each side, holding that dude in. And I know that that's not guitar string tight, it's actually not pulling in my throttle there. How often should you be sinking your carburetors? The answer to that is how good is your linkage? How good is everything else on your induction system? If you've got blown out throttle shafts, you're gonna be sinking your carburetors a lot more than normal. If you didn't do a good job installing your linkage or you have really cheap linkage, you'll be sinking your carburetors a lot more than normal as well. This is a brand new setup that we have on here. As far as the uh, linkage goes, the induction system was previously existing on this vehicle and didn't run bad or anything like that. The only problem it has, it, it would never get below 1100 on idle no matter what I did on here. We figured out a couple issues besides that, but also the customer wanted to go to a Berg linkage as well. This motor is built by Gary Berg, which is pretty freaking awesome. So to put a Berg linkage on it just seems right. Now that we actually have it set up with a new linkage on it, I would expect that in, let's say 500 miles, if my customer calls me and tells me I has a stumble, something like that, that's really not a big deal to me. I know something is probably settled here somewhere. Either potentially one of the camshafts might have a little additional play in it we gotta work out. There's just certain things that may make it come out of whack. If the customer's got a huge heavy lead foot and he keeps stomping the throttle down, you're gonna get things to move down here. I know this customer, he takes care of his cars, he doesn't drive them around like an idiot. So I don't expect to see this thing back and any adjustment I'll make will mostly be with the crescent wrench. The way you saw, I just did a little bend on either one of these arms out here. That's about the extent I'll have to get into it. I shouldn't have to blow arms off and resynchronize everything. It should just be like, up. Oh, one's not hitting before the other one. So there's a slight adjustment in the future is all I expect to do to this. Because once you have it set up to idle and full throttle, and you know where everything's tuned properly, if you're having an issue, it's most likely not the carburation synchronization. I had to learn that at an early age. My dumbass changed a set of heads because I had a popping on one side I couldn't get rid of. I didn't know enough about it. I was lazy. I kept taking it to my friend Ron to adjust my carburetors on it. And he suggested, hey man, you probably got a, a bad valve somewhere. So I ripped my heads off my motor and changed them as opposed to just getting better linkage, better carburetors, 34 ICT garbage, just, yeah. We all learn our lessons one way or another. Buy once and cry once. Spend the money on the good stuff. You see this motor is littered with good stuff. We got a CSP breather. We got Ross Wolf candy all over it. We got good Spanish IDA Webers. And we got Gene Berg linkage on them. Good ignition. Good componentry all the way around. Everything's set up right. So when we get this thing dialed, she's actually dialed. I gotta put a shifter in this because you got a bird shifter as well that we're gonna throw in this dude. And once we get the bird shifter, we're gonna take it on a test drive together.
response because well, uh, the one spring on that linkage helps out a lot.